Hello everyone. I'm glad you came back. We're going to have another session of quilting math. And today we're going to cover how many blocks do I need? Well, there's all sorts of controversy about this and everything else. So I'm going to try and explain it to you. Um, now what happens is bed sizes and crib sizes and all this are, are put out in a range, right? So like for a queen size, the average range of a queen size quilt is anywhere from 80 to 92 inches wide and then 90 to 96 inches long. If you want a longer drop or you know like you want the 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 queen size bed itself is not that big but this is talking about dropping off the sides so you have like your pillow tuck your foot and side drops right so a twin size is a range of 59 to 71 inches wide and 85 to 91 long now that can change all sorts of things can change on these right so it's just basically a range of blocks so when you're talking about how many blocks you need so let's if we're accepting this is the range how many blocks do you need to make well that depends on the size of your block and what size it will be finished within the quilt so when the last lesson we talked about finished and unfinished well, the fastest way to figure this out for blocks and how many I need is to first let's go like, okay, your finished size of your block. And let's say it's a 12 inch finished block. It could be 18, it could be whatever. Now this is not, we're not going to put borders on it. We can add borders if you want, but the calculation is a little bit more complex. But this is so, how big do we want to make it? Well, the bigger you make a quilt, the more fabric you use up and the better chance you have of conquering your mom's scrap more. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to go for the for queen size, 92 to 96, well then all of a sudden, like those, are they divisible by 12? Hmm, well we have to, you know, we have to kind of sit there and think about it. I know people don't like quilt math and they certainly don't like math at the best of times. The same thing with the twin size, right? We're now, let's say, we're going to do 71 to 91. This is why I do my quilts for twins at 5 feet, which is 5 feet, 5 times 12 is 60. You know, so we're right within that range. And then 7 by 12, like, I mean, we're right at the maximum of the range, right? We're at like 84, but we're well within that range, right? So basically, this is where... We're kind of like, how do we do this? Okay, so let's say you have a 12 inch block that finishes at 12 inches within a quilt. So what you do is you take your width. So you got a 12, this is the example I'm gonna get, a 12 inch square. And that's the finished size. And that's important to know because this makes it much easier. So 80 to 92. Now you get grab your calculator and we're gonna go, okay, so if I want to make a 92 wide, okay, 92 divided by 12 equals 7.6, okay, right, and by, and then 96, 96 divided by 12 is eight. So if I do uh, seven times 12, I'm gonna be 84, so I'm within range. And I wouldn't have to put a border on it, right? So I could do seven by eight, seven by eight blocks, right? Which equals, seven times eight equals 56 blocks. Right? Very simple. Very, very simple. If I was to do this on a twin size, there we go, like five across, seven down, 35. Right? That's why quilters like that 12 inch block. But let's say now you're working at a nine and a half inch, or nine, nine inch square, right? Which is a nine and a half inch block. And that's the finish size. Well, you got no board behind this. Oh no! Can you still see it? Yes, you can. 
So basically, on a twin size, this is for a queen, remember? Now let's see a twin. So we're going to do nine inches. So, oh wait, this thing is going crazy. Okay, so nine inches divided by 71 equals, no, nine, nine, no, 71 divided by nine equals 7.8 by, and then your twin size, then that's going to be 91 divided by 9 is 10, or uh, 8 by 10, right, 8 by 10, because nobody's going to complain if it's a little bit wider, and we're talking a little bit wider, like by an inch or two, nobody cares, so when you take this now, you're going to make 80 blocks, that are nine inch finished or nine and a half inch blocks. You're going to sit there and okay, this is what I'm going to do for a quilt. But you still haven't addressed borders. So you kind of have to decide how big my border is going to be or how big do I want my border? Do I want a three inch border? Do I want a five inch border? Do I want whatever? Well, once you figure out your border, your finished border size of five inches, Right away, you got five inches on this side and five inches on that side. So now you're taking away ten inches right away that you're not playing with. You're you're not putting blocks into. You're actually using that up as border, right? So now instead of like in this calculation, we're not doing like seventy-one divided by nine. We're doing sixty-one divided by nine, right? To get your five-inch border. And this one, instead of like 91 divided by 9 to give us 10, we're looking at 81 divided by 9 to give us 9. So all of a sudden you don't have as many blocks to make because you've taken up that room with your border. Right? Now, there's other things you can do like with stop borders and all the rest of the stuff, right? If you find, if you're just making a quilt and your blocks are a little small, and because you have so many seams on the edge, there's nothing that says you can't put a one and a half or a two inch stop border along that outside edge. And what that does is actually stabilizes your quilt. So when you're done with your quilting and you hold the quilt up and pull it out like this, you're not stretching it now because you've got a little stop border on the top. The other thing you can do if you're afraid of stretching your quilt when you're holding it up and showing your friends, oh, look what I made. You can put a little stay stitching around the edge and that stay stitching stays within the quarter inch seam allowance that you're allowing yourself, right? So if you find blocks that you just love and you go, oh, I want to make this quilt all of these blocks or I want to put a bunch of samplers in, this is how, this is how you do the calculation of how many blocks do you need. You also, as well with borders, most some people like the the look of sashing right now your sashing rule ew, i don't like rules in quilting but the sashing rule is not to exceed more than one quarter of the block right so on a 12 inch block the sashing between the blocks shouldn't be more than three inches right the sashing on a nine inch block should be, you know, shouldn't be more than two inches, right? So, you know, you have to be kind of careful because it makes the quilt look off. Unless, of course, you're going to do, you know, sashing and quarter stones and put fake a block inside, right? Like faking, faking a block inside the, inside the border, right? As part of the sashing. And you'll see that where they'll have one block in the middle and then their sashing is very complex piece sashing and it looks like there's two blocks but it's not one one is part of the sashing and one is just a block so this is how I do it and how I design so I hope this helps I you know it's kind of like this is always like how many blocks I always shoot for more blocks I always make more blocks than I need and I end up with orphan blocks and I make baby quilts and it, it's fine you know whatever you're going to use and it's always a good idea to try this out even if you just make a couple of blocks a mock-up is a really great great way to start even if you only make a couple of blocks and you start, I'm going to turn this into a table topper it'll be fine it'll it's going to be wonderful 
Anyways, I want to thank you again for coming and joining us today. This has been such a wonderful experience being here with you today. So I want to hope that you have a, a fabulous week ahead. And we'll see you next time. Bye! If you have questions about what you saw in this video, or you have ideas for content, or something you want to see us do, please put those comments in the description below. But also, while you're there, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out. Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.